Okay, so I'm back, and uh, today's video blog, or whatever you want to call this thing, um, is going to be about drums and miking drums. Um, I have a wacky system, I guess. Um, it's not what the pros would call professional. Um, I have to make do with what I have because I'm on a low budget. So I just do what I have to do to get the signals from the drums into the uh, PA and then into the um, computer. So today uh, I'll just show you what I normally do. This is what every time I record drums, this is usually um, what I do. Uh, over here we have the PA, uh, standard mixer, um, power supply, and of course my salad. Um, over here are the drums, and you can see there are um, some mic stands uh, all around the kit. Uh, I'll just kind of take you through my, my uh, general process on this. Down here in the kick drum, uh, I've got a microphone that my old drummer friend Dave uh, lent me. It's an Audix F12. Um, I've ne uh, never purchased a, a good mic for, for kick drum, and uh, he bought it when we were doing some recording, and when the bands when the band sort of split up, he told me I could just kind of hang on to it until he needed it. Um, it's not probably as good as a Shure Beta 52 or something like that, but it does the job. And what I usually do is just kind of lay it in here on a pillow, because I've got some pillows dampening the front and back heads to give me um, a nice thumping sound. Uh, I don't like a lot of overtones in my kick drum. I like it kind of dead. Um, so that's the kick drum over here. We'll just kind of go around. Over here, um, I've got a mic. I don't know if you can see it too well. On the snare, it's a Shure. Uh, SM58, which uh, is a standard vocal mic, but it's not bad for um, instruments. I've got it attached to the snare on this thing called a claw. I have another one over here somewhere, I think, so you can see it a little bit better in the light. This is called a claw, uh, and what you do is you attach this piece to the rim of the drum, and then this, the microphone goes on the end of there and you can just kind of clip this onto anywhere you want and then have the mic point down. So that's what that's that's what's going on there. They have much newer and nicer ways to clip on these mics, but uh, you know, I'm still using my equipment from 20 years ago. So <laughs> um here I have a microphone on the first tom. It is a uh Sennheiser. Over here I have another Sennheiser, same one. Uh, I use them. I use all these mo mics usually for vocals. Um, I, I just don't have enough, uh, enough good mics for recording. You probably want to put a Shure SM57 uh, onto those onto these toms. Those are the old reliables. Uh, over on the floor tom over there, I got another claw and a Shure SM58. Um, it's just you know, I just use it to get the job done and. Uh, one more mic I've got up here is the uh, overhead, which I use uh, mostly to record my vocals, actually. This is a condenser mic. It's better than some of the mics that I have here, but, um, you know, it wasn't a, a expensive condenser. It was probably about 100 bucks. It's from Sterling Audio. Uh, it sounds pretty, pretty good. So I use it for overheads uh, to pick up Symbols and ambience and things like that. Uh, mostly symbols. Uh, the ride comes through pretty nicely on there. Um, so you need that because all these other mics are sort of pointing down at things. They're pointing at the drums and the drum heads themselves. Um, the hi-hat over here, I, I don't really ever mic that separately. The snare drum mic picks up a lot of that through uh, what you call bleed. So these mics are actually all going to pick up sound, you know, from all the other pieces of this kit. 
but the ones that are in proximity are going to be louder, so that that hi hat's going to come through to the snare, and uh, these tom mics are going to pick up some hi hat as well, and hopefully this overhead will pick up the cymbals. I haven't tested the kit yet. I just literally finished miking it up. So um, what happens is all the signals come down through these wires on the floor, and they come around and they go into this mixer, this uh, monster of a of a PA mixer. And you know I have the channels labeled here. Let me get out of the light. Uh, toms, floor tom snare, kick, and OH, which is overhead. And then I can change my settings here on the board. Uh, those are all the wires. And they go out. Master levels are here. <coughs> Excuse me. And what will happen is, uh, when I go upstairs, I will get the, the computer, and I'll put it here on this table, and I'll run a wire or two from this mixer uh, that contains the signals, all the signals coming in from the kit here. So everything comes out of there, goes into that mixer, and then one signal comes out and will go into the computer. And again, professionals will scoff at this because what you want to do in a real situation is you want to mic each one of these things separately and then get a separate signal into your recording mechanism or software so that if your snare is not loud enough, you want to just bring the snare up louder, uh, you can do that. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm pretty low tech and I have to do everything on a budget. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, be separating my drum signals as much as I'd like to. Um, it comes in handy, I'd love to do it, but uh, I, I am not set up to do that. I probably could if I worked a little bit harder at it, but I have to do things sort of quickly <laughs> uh, because my time is limited. So what I'm going to do is bring the computer down and hopefully record some drum tracks today using this setup. Um, and that's it. See you next time.